you wake up in a cabin. Your head is ringing, and you can't seem to recall what had happened before you blacked out. At least there is a backpack next to you, which seems to belong to you. You check it. You discover a map, a flashlight, and twelve wrapped candy canes with a tag that says, Use in doses of two- Who prescribes candy cane? The map is labeled with a starting point, which is the cabin you are currently in. It shows a route that leads to the destination, marked by a star. The flashlight has working batteries, but you don't know how long it will last. The candy canes look good as new, however. They have a soft, magical glow to them. But you can't deduce why you keep them, because they might be useful later. Go outside, search the cabin. I'm gonna be looking around. The cabin looks like it hasn't been used in a while. It's dark and dusty. With minimal appliances, it wouldn't be beneficial to stay here much longer. Yeah, check the cabinets. The cabinets are mostly empty, except for a few broken utensils. You head on out- Wow, the game really wants me to leave! Huh. You, you head on outside, startled at the sudden gust of wind that hits you. The ground is covered in snow. No wonder it's so cold. The cabin seems to be in the middle of a forest. There's a trace of a dirt trail on the ground, barely seen through the snow. I go back and search the cabin. <laughs> the cabin looks like it hasn't been used in a while. Oh, man, is this the same dealio? Jesus Christ. Okay, fine. I'll follow the trail. God, securing so a backpack over your shoulders, you trudge along the dirt trail. A soft glow of the sun peeks through the branches, illuminating your steps. As you venture further into the forest, the trees become more dense, and the trails begins to vanish. You come across a cave. It's dark and dingy in there, so you turn on your flashlight. There's a deer hiding in the cave. Its leg seems to be injured. A mysterious force pulls you towards the creature. Approach the deer cautiously. You approach the deer, showing that you mean no harm. The deer lifts its head and blinks at you. You don't have any medical supplies on you. But wait, the cannon canes are glowing. Perhaps this is something... Perhaps there's something useful about them. Offer the deer two candy canes. The deer bows its head in gratitude. Thank you so much for saving me. I knew you'd find me here eventually. It nudges its head towards the forest, beckoning you to follow. I mean, this ain't the weirdest thing I've come across. Where are we? I am surprised I'm not even questioning this. Is this just normal in the world I'm in? Where are we going? To the North Star, of course. You don't remember? All I remember is waking up in a cabin. Ah, you must have suffered a concussion. That's why you don't remember anything. Don't worry. My name's Rudy, by the way. An old friend of yours, and I've got your back. Your memories will return once we reach the North Star. The North Star? So that's the place on my map. You also drew that map yourself. I help with the details, of course. By the way, we should go find the presents first. If my guess is correct, they should be scattered along the way. Am I Santa? Huh. Do I have any little elves that could help me out here? I mean, like, I, um, I, I'm feeling mighty thirsty. <laughs> oh, God, don't ask me what I mean by that. I, I have no idea. I just woke up, okay? Like, I, I have no idea what I'm even thinking. <laughs> what presents? You know, like presents to give to people. You prepared quite a few of them, but they must have gotten lost when we fell off our right. I am Santa. Yeah. You kind of need to do them for your job. I still don't know what my job is, but all right. After a while, you come across a gingerbread house. I have a feeling some of the presents might be in there. Perhaps we should go and check. Well, I don't like to go knock at stranger stores, so this better be worth it. You go up to the frosted door and knock. Hello? 
Hello! Sorry for the sudden appearance, but my dear friend uh, here has something to ask of you. He can't understand me. You're the only one who can understand me. Is this another piece of my lore that you probably remember? The ability to talk to deers? Hey! You're the one who didn't question it earlier. Don't be weird about it now. Great. Now I look insane. I mean, hi! I wanted to ask if you've seen any presents around here. Presents? Like holiday presents? Of course. Uh, come on in first. My name's Sugarcoat, by the way. Nice to meet you, Sugarcoat. Is a coat made of sugar? <laughs> I mean, can I, can, can I get a piece of that sugar? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Only the finest, most expensive sugar. It's designer, by the way. I was... I was kidding. See? This guy's more insane than you. Who even buys a designer coat made of sugar? Please, do take a seat. The presents will take a while to prepare, though, so feel free to make yourself at home. Would you and your dear friend at least be interested in staying for a meal? You must be hungry from your travels. Thank you so much for the offer, but we don't want to overstep your generosity. What's on the menu? Um, I feel like the first one might be the right choice, but also, like, um, how, why is the second one so short? Uh, that's a shame. I just finished making some appetizer. Are you absolutely sure you don't want to try it? A tantalizing smell wafts through the air. Your stomach growls. Uh, second thought, uh, I can take you up on that offer. I'm good, sorry. Okay, I'll take you up on that offer. Perfect. Bring out the dishes, gentlemen. A line of little gingerbread men came out with the appetizer, dessert, and drinks, and places them on the table in front of you. Please, enjoy these while we prepare the main course. What do you dig into first? Wazons, apple pie, eggnog. I mean, I'm feeling pretty parched, so eggnog it is. You dig into the rich, creamy eggnog. It's the best thing you've ever tasted. Enjoying yourself. Trust me, the main course is going to be even better. Bring out the medicine, Wellington! The gingerbread man bring out a dish so large that it might as well consist of the whole deer. I don't know how my dear friend feels about this. Also, on the fact that there is, like, there's just, like, deer hordes as, like, a, I don't know, a, as decor. The delicious smell hits your nose immediately, and your mouth starts to water again despite having just eaten. Enjoy your meal. Also, I'll have to remind you not to eat too much, or you won't be able to stop yourself. <laughs> you take a bite of the venison wellington. The meat has been cooked to just the right amount. The texture is perfect. Not too raw, but still juicy enough to be bursting with flavor. I take another bite. You take another bite, which tastes just as good as the first one. Another! The meat tastes so delicious that you forget your surroundings. Another bite? Before you realize it, you were scoffing the whole thing down, bite after bite. Your stomach is full, but your brain screams at you to eat more. I keep eating. You succumb to your desires and eat, throwing aside your utensils and dipping your head down to bite. Eat! You keep eating, determined to eat the plate. Eat! You're almost done. Just a few more bites. Finish! Finally, you've eaten the entire meal. The large plate is clean enough for you to see your own reflection in its ceramic surface. Instead of a human head... The head of a deer looks back at you. You bring your hands up to touch your face, but find that your hands have been replaced by her. Oh, it's a Pinocchio situation. A random scream rips itself from your throat. The door creaks open. Sheesh, I told you not to eat too much. Well, at least it seems like you enjoyed your meal. Now if you'll excuse me, it's my turn to eat dinner. The last thing you see is the gingerbread man take you into a dark kitchen before you are knocked out. Ending one. Don't be fooled by a sweet smile. I mean, you, you didn't really give me much of a choice. It's either eat or not eat. And you even gave me a choice to second guess myself. What was I supposed to think? But okay, okay, I guess cannibalism is on the table now. Yeah, I ain't gonna eat. No thanks. I don't want to be on the menu. 
Ah, I was hoping I'd have somebody to share this meal with. Well, it's fine. Seems like I'll be the only one dining today. Okay, hope you enjoy your meal. Can I have my presents now, please? I need it for my job, apparently. You try to open the front door, but it's locked. Uh, the door is locked. I know. I at least said I'd be the only one dining today. I didn't say you'd be able to leave anyway. I didn't have a choice not to come in! What happened to the house? Wait, what happened to the house? It looks totally different, and a whole lot creepier. On second thought, I'm feeling like skipping to the main course. I've been craving venison wellington for a while. Well then where did you get the meat from? Don't you agree, dear friend? Hey, quick, do something or it's gonna eat me! Wait, before the main course, let me introduce you to some snack. Um, can I interest you in some magical healing canes? <laughs> Uh, I'll- I'll go with the snack one. You take out the only edible thing you have in your backpack. Oh? What's that? Uh, magical healing catechades, apparently. Okay. He just said okay. What? I don't think he's okay in the head, but then again, like, uh, he's in the business of turning people to deer and then eating them, so, uh Give sugarcoat two catechades? Sugarcoat takes a bite of one of the candy canes. Whoa, I don't feel hungry anymore. Thank you for your kind gift. You know what? I'll give you a present right now as an apology for the has- You were supposed to give them to me anyway! You're- you're- you're obstructing the job of a- um- I, I don't even know where we are, but you're obstructing the work of an official here! But you literally said you were preparing the- Ah, oh, never mind. You have successfully acquired the present of the past. Okay. Thank you for stopping by. Feel free to come back anytime later for that. No, thank you. I do not want to be on your menu. You and the deer quickly exit the gingerbread house and find yourselves back on the street. That was scary. At least we got a present. One step closer to our goal, and one less life-threatening encounter to face. Yeah, I don't think I'll be returning there. Right? I'd like to keep my height intact, thank you very much. Looks like we should reach our next destination before nightfall. Hopefully we can find somewhere safe to stay the night. You and Rudy continue on the path, following the route on the map. Eventually, just as the sun sets, you come across a frozen lake at the edge of the forest. The surrounding area looks peaceful enough to stay for the night. You walk over to a small clearing near the trees, enough to keep you from the wind, but close enough to the lake. Hey, do you see that under the lake? You head over to where Rudy is looking and notice something glimmering under the lake. What do you think that is? Could it be one of the presents? What would a present be doing under a lake? How am I supposed to know? You can ask the present itself after you fish it out. Okay, don't need- Don't need to give me all that sass. You grab some nearby stick to create a makeshift fishing pole. Now, it will be too dangerous to walk on the ice after break it, so you decide to eat two candy canes to give yourself a protection spec. This was not established in the slightest. Used to ca- Okay, I guess we're just taking them. You immediately feel much lighter. Now, you can walk on the ice without worry of falling through. Pinpoint the approximate location of the present. Alright. Good start. Uh, okay. Down. Keep going. Uh, okay. It's still, it's to the right a little bit. You plunge a stick through the ice. It's on the right! It's on the right! Okay, you plunge a stick through the ice, but unfortunately miss the target. Thanks to the candy cane, you don't fall in, but the present floats further away. Okay, it's on the right! Good start. Okay, it's down! Keep going. Uh, it's down? Halfway down. Uh, up? Almost there. The, oh, the left? Yeah, okay. You plunge the stick through the ice and hook it through the ribbon tied to the present. Bring it up into the air. 
He has successfully acquired the present of the present. Okay. Hey, let's do a bet. If there's a present of the past and a present of the present, what do you think the next one might be? Uh, present? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea what it could be. I mean, past, present, it could be anything. I mean, it could very well be the presence of friendship. Uh, would have guessed future, but we'll find out soon. The two of you lay down side by side on a makeshift moss bed. Look, the stars are coming out. Aren't they pretty? I remember we used to go stargazing back home in the North Pole. Well, more like I'd have to drag you out to see the stars. Otherwise, you'd be hunched over working 24-7. So what exactly did I do? Hmm, how should I say? You're kind of an entrepreneur who runs a present-making and delivery business. I am Santa Claus. We were in the middle of a delivery when we got into an accident. Uh, but don't worry about it. It's not the first time it has happened. So, we should really invest in better insurance. <laughs> Who exactly are you? I told you, I'm an old friend of yours. Well, I usually look a little bit different from now, so you wouldn't have recognized me anyway. What do you mean you're not a talking deer? Hey, even in this form, I'm a very esteemed individual, mind you. You want to chat a little longer, but sleepiness is wearing down on you. Rudy curls up around you to keep you warm as you fall asleep. You wake up as dawn breaks, the light slowly emerging from the horizon over the icy lake. How am I not frostbitten from this? Good morning. Wow, sure is early. We've no time to waste. Look, we're about halfway there. Okay, next house. Let's try to get there before nightfall, yeah? The two of you continue on the route indicated by the map. As you progress further, you notice that there are fewer and fewer trees. Eventually, the forest gives way to a barren snowland. The trail also ends as the ground is fully covered in snow. Since there are no trees to block the wind, the chilliness hits you, full blast. In the near distance, you can make out the shape of a tall structure. As you trudge closer, it appears to be an ice cat. Ice King?! Sheesh. First a gingerbread house and now an ice castle? Does affordable housing not exist here? Knock on the door. Um, nobody in that big house is going to hear that. Oh, hi. Whoa. Hello? Crazy. I literally get... I literally never get visitors. The last time was like, what? A century ago? A century? Just how old is this dude? Is he Jack Frost? Honestly, I have no idea. It's real hard to keep track of time when you haven't seen sunlight in ages. Wait! You can understand me! Yeah? Am I not supposed to, or am I going insane again? Can't tell. Anyway, you can come in. By the way, I'm His Royal Highness, Prince Elisad Iceberg the Twelfth. I go by Elise. So, or Ellie, or Mr. E. I'm chill with whatever. Okay, I thought you were Jack Frost, but it seems that you are a knockoff Elsa. That, that, that's fine, that's fine. You're hot enough to... You're hot enough. Uh, I don't really have anything prepared, so... Do you just want to have a tour of the castle? Even though there's nothing fun about it? Really? Living in an ice castle sounds so cool to me. Not when you've been cursed to live here for all of eternity by yourself. I would rather be anywhere else. Oh, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah, it sucks here. If I were to get stuck in a place forever, I would rather be somewhere like Hawaii rather than in the middle of a barren snowland. Ugh, why do I always get the short end of the stick? Um, give us a moment. Okay, so I feel kind of bad for him. Uh, I'm so confused why he can't just leave on his own. Same, same. Why don't we do something for him? I feel bad just asking for the present and leaving. So what do you think? We can ask him for the present and then offer to bring him along with us. We can drop him off somewhere. Anywhere else. You shrug a nod. Hey, Alice. We're actually travelers and we came here because we wanted to ask if there were any presents that appeared recently. 
But if you want to leave the castle, you are totally free to come with us. For a while, of course. Oh, so that's why a box fell through my ceiling window yesterday. Thought that was my food delivery. <laughs> oh my god, you get Uber Eats out here? <sighs> I'd love to take you up on that offer, but it's not that simple. You see, I've been cursed, but I've been cursed to physically stay within the castle. Like invisible barriers preventing you from leaving? No, if I go outside, I just die. <laughs> that's a, that's a anticlimactic. What? Yeah. But how do you know for sure? I know. Never try going outside. But how do you know if you never try going outside? Because I don't want to risk dying. But how do you know if you'll die if you've never gone outside? Because I don't want to go outside knowing there's a chance that I'll die. But how do you know for... Rudy, you're getting real annoying here. All right, this is going in circles, so let's just stop and focus on what we can do. Exactly, you get it. I still don't get it. Nobody asked. Oh, shut up. You watch the lively banter between Rudy and the prince. Seems like they are already great friends. Hmm. What if I offer you a trip to Hawaii? What if I offer you Rudy as a companion? Eh, uh, Rudy as a companion. You're trading away your own friend? Well, I could use a companion to argue with. It gets boring arguing with the voices in your head after several decades. Uh, trade Rudy for a present. Good <laughs> boy. Why? I'm pretty sure that this will lead to a bad end. But let's trade Rudy for a present. What? You just traded your one and only friend. I'll come back later. Promise. Oh, you'd better. After you get your memories back, you're gonna regret ditching me. Get ready to repent, Buster. Don't worry, I'll take good care of your friend while you're gone. Here's your present. You successfully acquired the present of the future. Ha! Huh. Huh. I win the bet. I knew it was going to be future. Now hurry up and get going so I can continue arguing with this prince. And you can finish your job and return sooner. Grip your backpack. You continue along the way to what seems to be the snowy mountains where the tunnel is located. The journey is filled with silence. Only the sound of your own footsteps and the chilly wind echoing in your ears. Uneasiness breaks at your gut as the large mountains come into view, make you feel so small and alone in comparison. The trudge continues. You arrive at the base of the mountain. You have no idea where the tunnel is, but there is only one path that is level enough to walk on. Nervously, you begin your blind hike through the mountains. There is nothing in sight but layers and layers of snow, yet you can't help but feel a sense of apprehension. Your legs shake as you try to stay upright on the snowy slope. You feel a tremor beneath your feet, but that's just your muscles shaking. Or is it? You pick up the pace, determined to make it to the tunnel before your legs give out. A snow monster appears behind you. Uh, try to greet it? You look up at the snow monster, trying to reason with it, but it can't even hear you. A foot comes down just millimeters away from your head. You bolt away as fast as you can, but your speed is no match for the over six meter tall monster. Your body is at its limit. You collapse in the snow, unable to move as a large shadow falls over you, like the sky is caving in. Ending 2. Two pairs of legs are better than one. Oh. Frick. Okay, maybe we should have traded Rudy? I'm going to reconsider. Uh, what if I offer you a trip to Hawaii? Do you even know how to get to Hawaii? I can't leave the castle, though. How are you going to do that? Use two candy canes? You hand over two candy canes to Ellis. As soon as it reaches his hands, the entire castle starts to morph. What the? How? What? How, how did I just terraform an entire snowy wasteland into Hawaii? How is that even possible? The cool ice walls melt away to a bright blue sky. The ceiling window becomes a sun. Hard floors give away to sand. Palm trees spring up around the luxurious resort, 
which is adorned with swimming pools and beautiful scenery. Holy! What did you do? You a magician? How did you grant my wish? Are you perhaps Santa Claus? Okay, we got your dream vacation. Now where's the present? Wow, is this a coconut? Never seen it in person before. Oh, right, here's the present. You successfully acquired the present of the future. And Rudy is going to gloat. Yep, I know, I know, it was gonna be future. I knew it was gonna be future too, okay? It's not as if it's the present of friendship. I mean, are we ever going to get that? Come on, let's leave this guy to enjoy his vacation. We've got just a little more till we reach the North Star. Wait, did you say North Star? Oh man, I heard the final stretch is scary as hell. Yeah, I've met several travelers who were on their way there, but ended up backtracking after barely making it out alive. Ah oh, well, made it this far, so we'll just have to wager on our wits, right? Yeah, good luck out there. You and Rudy leave the castle through a tiny opening barely visible to the eye. From the outside, the castle looks just the same. No sign of the tropical illusion. Am I just giving people like, um... Okay, hold up. I'm just wondering. Are the candy canes actually magical or am I just like sending some sort of illusion to all these folks? Like making Rudy think that he feels better. Making, um... Making like that gingerbread guy like think that, oh yeah, I've already eating a whole bunch. I'm not hungry anymore. And yeah, it's definitely an illusion here. What's the deal with the candy canes? The two of you continue on the way to what seems to be the snowy mountains of where the tunnel is located. It might just be a MacGuffin. I'm just saying, it might just be a MacGuffin. Even though you try to be confident, Prince Alice's warning prickles in the back of your head as the large mountains come into view, making you feel so small and alone in comparison. The trudge continues in silence. You arrive at the base of the mountain. You have no idea where the tunnel is, but there is only one path that is level enough to walk on. Nervously, you begin your blind hike through the mountains. There is nothing in sight but layers and layers of snow, yet you can't help but feel a sense of apprehension. Your legs shake as you try to stay upright on the snowy slope. You feel a tremor beneath your feet, but that's just your muscles shaking. Or is it? Did you feel that? Yeah, I hope it's not an earthquake. I sure hope not. It would surely cause an avalanche and then we'd be trapped here for who knows how long. We should hurry and make it out of here. You pick up the pace, determined to make it out of the tunnel before your legs give out. A snow monster appears behind you. What the? Oh no, we're so screwed. Uh, I will still try to greet the monster. You look up at the snow monster, try to reason with it, but I can't even hear you. A phone comes out just millimeters away from your head. You bolt away as fast as you can, but your speed is no match for the over six meters tall monster. Hurry! Give me the candy canes! Uh, can over the two candy canes! Rudy to uses the two candy canes and begins to grow until he's the size of a horse. Get on my back! Now! I'm, I'm yumping! I'm yumping! Hold it tight, boss! With a boost of power from the candy canes, Rudy weaves between the monster's legs and sprints through the mountains. The monster roars, spewing icicles everywhere. A small shard scraps. A, a small shard scraps Rudy's legs, making the deer his in pain. Yeah, almost there. Hold on. Another loud thud shakes the ground behind you. Far up ahead, you glimpse a small black opening within pale snow. The tunnel over there. Tega. A large icicle embeds itself in Rudy's hind leg, and he stumbles a bit. You call out in concern. It's okay. I'm... Uh... With one last jump, Rudy launches you right off his back and into the tunnel. Grunting in pain, you scramble to your feet and look back for the deer. Rudy has collapsed right by the entrance, unable to move. Chunks of snow are falling around the deer as the ceiling of the tunnel starts to shake, signaling an avalanche. Rudy! Go! Hurry! I can't leave you here! Consider this payback for when you saved me. You turn away as the deer gets buried by the snow, which has now thoroughly blockaded the entrance, leaving you alone in the pitch black tunnel. So I still have to go through this alone? You have no choice but to continue through the darkness.
just how long is this tunnel? Will there even be an exit at the end? What even lies at the end? If there even is an end. Uh, I'm gonna be stuck here forever. I don't care. I just want this journey to end. Better be something good. There's a small circle of light up ahead. Have I reached heaven? Ah! Nah, it must be the exit. Can't believe I finally made it. A blinding light greets your exit. Your eyes adjust to the sun brightness after having been stuck in the dark. A snowy, peaceful landscape greets you. The night sky, aligned with twinkling stars, one star in particular, shines brighter than all. So this is the North Star, you think to yourself. It's quite beautiful. Makes me feel sad. Makes me feel sad. The stars dim in response, as though they share your sorrow. The light from one star glows brighter and brighter, until it seems to hit the earth. As the light clears, you can make out an object. A sleigh. What point is a sleigh without Rudy? This is my sleigh. Just then, some in your something in your backpack moves, setting it down. You pull out the three presents you had acquired, one by one. The presents open, and the essences of the past, present, and future all converge onto you. The memories of your life starts flitting back. You grew up in a village in the North Pole. One day, you found an injured fawn and befriended it after healing it. You started a gift packaging and delivery business with your friend under the Elias Santa Claus. You and your friend would go from continent to continent, delivering gifts to the residents and granting their Christmas wishes. Unfortunately, you do get into accidents sometimes and you would temporarily lose your memories until you were reunited with your sleigh. Each time you regain your memories, you were also gifted a wish of your own. Close your eyes and make a wish. I'll use my last two candy canes. May a wish come true. Hey! Hurry up and get in the damn sleigh! Slowpoke, do you even know how long I was under the snow for? When we get back home, you owe me five liters of hot chocolate. Rudy! Oh, good. You can recognize your business partner, at least. Also, welcome back, my friend. It's always good to see you regain your memories. You know, it's usually easier to get your sleigh back. Don't know why it was such a hassle this time around. Anyway, no one stay out here any longer, so get in the sleigh and we can get home. Back home we go. You get in the sleigh. As Rudy takes the reins, and the two of you head back home. The end. Anyway, that was Journey Back Home. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. So, this was a cozy little adventure, but I do have my gripes with it. I feel like most of the characters here are kind of two-dimensional, and there really isn't any depth to the characters. Like, yeah, we're just on this little journey, but I would have loved to know just a little bit more about each of the characters, even Rudy. But I understand that the developer only had about two weeks to finish this for the uh, for last year's Winter Gem, so maybe they had to cut a few things out. But hopefully they'll be able to like uh, work on something better in the future. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.